Oftentimes when black women gain weight, there is more than one conversation that happens. There's actually two conversations. The first conversation is I gained the weight or she gained the weight, woe is me, or oh my goodness, look at her. But then the conversation within the conversation is where did the weight go? Is it in my breast? Is it in my hips? Is it in my butt? And if the latter is true, then it will determine how this woman feels about her weight gain. We have to start having more conversations about desirability in the context of weight gain. And, you know, this topic is so polarizing, right? Like this is an extremely polarizing topic. And in many ways, I think that often we don't have the language to really speak about it. And one of the things that I noticed, and this is, and I'm going to get into Lauren London, but if you just look at like black women in, uh, in, in Hollywood or in the media, let's just use Housewives of Atlanta as an example. You notice how like if you started off watching the Housewives, and by the way, I don't watch Housewives of Atlanta anymore, <laughs> but for those of us who did watch Housewives of Atlanta, you might have noticed, sorry, my hair is doing some weird stuff. You might have noticed that, you know, at one point they were all thin, you know, when the show aired 10, however many, 12, 13 years ago. And then over time, you see how they, they gain weight, right? But you ever notice how they never have a stomach? Their stomach is always washboard flat. They always have like these, like over time, you see their bodies become more curvaceous. And the different conversations we need to have is, well, what is weight gain for a celebrity or an Instagram influencer, right? Or an Instagram model. And what is weight gain for the average everyday black woman? because I would say those things are different. We know, okay? And I don't think, I think this goes without saying that many celebrities, many Instagram models, many influencers, um, their weight is highly impacted by various procedures. And you know, celebrities, there's various procedures. They're not talking about these things, but these things are, are happening. They are happening. And we all know that weight gain is inevitable, okay? Nobody's getting back to their high school weight. If you are 45, please stop trying to get back to your high school weight, okay? Weight, we, we're all gonna gain weight. And I'm gonna break down the various ways. I don't know if it's gonna be in this video or another video, but I will be breaking down the various ways that, you know, like what contributes to weight gain. And, and it's gonna be the black woman edition of that. Um, but we have to talk about and consider social currency. We have to talk about and consider what is considered a flex, right? Like. I, I would say, I mean, you would think on the surface that when you gain weight, that's not a flex. But I would argue that in many ways for black women, our bodies, depending on, again, where, how you're proportioned, your body could, could be and is and often is a flex. And this is highly problematic because we know that not every a uh, woman, you know, and not every person or every woman in this case gains weight in the quote desirable places, you know, and we are often manipulated by the media and by the women we see in the media and the women we see on social media because we see them oftentimes gain weight and they look good. However, what we don't see <laughs> is perhaps and I'm not saying everybody, but perhaps certain procedures or things that they've done to make the weight gain more, quote unquote, tolerable. OK, so, you know, going back to the flex, I do think that black, I think women are extremely competitive. You know, some of this might be just by nature. So I think that we have to look at, well, what is considered a flex? And oftentimes, particularly with black women, having, you know, a certain body type, in this case, you know, a uh, larger breast, small waist, hips, a butt, um, those things can, for some women, are a flex. And why this is problematic, um, I'm going to mention a quick story. It's someone I knew who she was, you know, of, of I guess, quote unquote, average size, never had a large butt. She went to Africa 
and she actually did gain some weight. Um, but one of the things she said that was so moving for her was going to Africa and seeing how many, many black women are, are shaped differently. You know, many, many black women actually don't have a large butt, <laughs> you know, and it was, even though she gained this weight and she was talking about, how, oh, now I got to lose weight because, you know, whatever. But she was just so relieved to know that, like, I, th I think most of her life she had been either teased or um, folks have commented on the fact that, like, you, you're flat, like, you don't have a butt. And to go to Africa, which is where, obviously, you know, our ancestry, many of our ancestry lies, uh, and to see that, like, there's no one Black woman body type. And so... Going back to, to weight gain and why this matters is because I think for Black women, weight gain is complicated. It's not just a blanket like, oh, you gain weight and now you need to lose it. But it's more of a, okay, you gain this weight. Where is the weight? Uh, can this part, this midsection be made smaller, right? <laughs> so what do I need to do to make the midsection smaller? And then there's this conversation about not wanting to lose weight in certain areas, right? Because then you're losing those quote unquote desirable parts. And black, like weight gain for black women is complex. So we do need to have a conversation about the gaze. And like, you know, I heard someone say sometimes, you know, when you're thinking about the gaze that society has upon you, when you're thinking about the gaze that you have towards yourself, we also have to have a conversation about the exclusion of, like who is actually excluded from the male gaze or who is excluded from the gaze of desirability because they carry fat in, in, in parts of their body considered less desirable. And when it comes to the conversation about weight, it's uh, for, for the black woman, I would say it's less of a concern of, well, let me lose this weight so I can be desirable right? It's more of a conversation of let me not lose too much weight in this area, but then have a area or several areas that are more full to be desirable. It's, it's a whole, it's a completely different conversation that I think other groups of women are having. And I have a book. I have a book called My Own Gaze, Memoir of an Invisible Black Woman. And in this book, I actually go into some depth about body image, weight gain, weight loss. And if you are interested in this topic, I encourage you to look in the description box and click one of the two links or both links um, to buy my book or at least to look more into my book to see if you might be interested in purchasing it. So I'm going to be unpacking what it means when Black women struggle with weight. And this is, again, I don't know how many parts to this video will exist. I do have quite a bit to say on this topic. And then there's the whole thing about, like, what does it mean to struggle with weight? Like, when we say we we struggle with weight, what does that actually mean? Now, I think that we all think we know what it means. Because, like, oh, well, it just means that it's hard for you to lose weight. Or it just means that you need to eat less, exercise more. But my question is, when it comes to weight... Are we struggling? Like as black women, are we struggling? Is there a struggle being had? Sometimes there is. Or are you just a regular woman navigating life, doing doing things to the best of your ability <laughs> and controlling what you can control within your own circumstance? Like, are you struggling with weight? Or is your physical manifestation or is the physical manifestation of your body just what you look like at this point in your life? You know, is it just you've had a child or you've had several children or you've gone through trauma or you, you know, have lived, <laughs> essentially you've lived. And so I really want to, and sorry if you can hear the alarm going off, I really want to delve into this. And so I uh, gonna be, filming I actually have to go here so can't get too much into it today but I just want to come on and like I guess kind of give a little teaser and comment below if this topic interests you if you want more of this and I'm going to be also talking more specifically about Lauren London um just so you all know I mean I use celebrities as like a case study <laughs> uh, so in many ways um 
my videos are never fully about the celebrity, but more so about the, uh, the dynamic that the celebrity is sort of inspiring me to think about. And it's a great way to uh, really get into a conversation that is not being had enough. So comment below, let me know what you think about this topic. Um, like, subscribe, all the things. And uh, I will see you or you'll actually see me in my next video. Bye.